Today's video is going to be something a little bit different. I will be following the excellent instructions I found on wikihow.com to build my own DIY paint spraying booth. Why would I do such a thing? Great question. Because I want to paint a video card orange without getting any dust in my paint job. That's why. Step one in this guide is hilarious. Visualize your design, it says. I mean, come on. If I had any vision, would I need a guide on WikiHow for how to do this? So no, I outright refused to do any visualization, which surprisingly ended up biting me in the butt only a little bit later on. Steps two and three, the measuring and the cutting of the PVC tubing were by far the most tedious, but actually still only took about 40 minutes. Depending on your goal, you might alter the provided design a little bit, which is easy enough by the way, but while making something smaller might be better for painting like tabletop gaming figurines or something like that, if you wanted to do something bigger, I don't know how suitable this design would be and you might want to look into something more professional. The guide is for an eight foot by four foot enclosure. For step four, the article suggests laying out all of the pipes that are cut by size, but I actually went one step further and labeled each of the pieces to make my life a little bit easier later on, and I'm really glad that I did that, because depending on what alterations you made to the design, you might have some lengths of piping that are very, very close to each other, and writing it down once is better than going back and remeasuring them constantly. For step five, my lovely assistant showed up to help me. And <laughs> if you've ever assembled IKEA furniture with a significant other, and remember, this is basically IKEA furniture without even IKEA grade instructions and included tools, <laughs> then you probably have some idea how it went from this point on. Where are your safety glasses? I am wearing glasses. Right, but those are not safety glasses. Okay. Those are metal shards in the Glass shards in the eye glasses. They'll still protect my eyes. You basically want to choose the flattest and straightest of the four leg pieces to serve as the legs. Then you put the appropriate PVC T joints on them for the horizontal cross braces. So you've got four tall pieces for each of the four corners. So it is suggested that we use a lot of pressure to, um, to pop these babies on. You've been having a lot of M&Ms lately. Why don't you lean on it? Wow. It was at this point that I realized though that I had missed some of the cutting and needed to go back in time to make some small, several inch long cuts that would help us join our 90 degree elbows and our T pieces. Derp. Wait, what? How are you supposed to do that? So it's supposed to go right through? Wait a minute, what? No, I don't think they do do that. How is that supposed to work? So how would you... Oh great, now how's this gonna come out? Uh-oh. Are we supposed to cut another small piece to go in there? From there, it was a matter of disassembling the upper part of the frame, adding the middle section that allows you to hang project materials that are difficult to lay down flat, and finally, putting in a middle support. Step six is wow. fine tuning, which of okay. course I skipped since my assembly was perfect from the get go, which leads us to step seven, enclosing the booth in plastic. Here's where the instructions get a little wishy-washy. So we just kind of started making it up as we went along. We draped plastic over the structure, then taped it up like a Christmas present. The objective here is to close in your workspace. Remember, you'll be wearing a face mask and eye protection if you care about your health at all and you wanna keep dust out and keep paint in so that you aren't contaminating the outside area. Step eight, now it's time to put your drop sheet down. Honestly, I don't think it was necessary to buy a fancy canvas drop sheet for this, but I didn't have time to visualize the design at the beginning, so I certainly wasn't gonna run around making changes to the recipe willy-nilly. So there you go. You're going to want to tape this drop sheet or whatever else it is that you end up using to the plastic sheeting on the sides to ensure again that you're closing everything in. Step nine, this is another uh, visualization would have been helpful moment. Make sure that you have a plan for how you're going to mount your box fan before you start. I thought that I was gonna put it on a ladder, 
but that ended up being too tall, so I had to find a monitor box that I had lying around. Once you've decided on a height for the fan, mark it and move on to step 10, where you cut out the hole for the furnace filter, tape that baby on, then tape your box fan to it so that you can exhaust air from your paint booth without compromising the health of the people around you. And that's pretty much it. One trip to the local hardware store and two hours later, we've got ourselves a DIY paint booth suitable for small hobbyist grade projects. Please note though, that if your intention is to use it more than occasionally or with oil-based epoxies and paints like the hardcore stuff, you should invest in a couple of fans that cannot ignite flammable paint fumes and just generally have a beefier setup overall. But this is great for what I need and I'm glad that you came along with me for the ride of creating it. Soylent is a nutritionally complete meal that comes at an affordable price and in an affordable bottle. It contains all the elements of a healthy diet with limited contribution from less healthy aspects like refined sugar, saturated fats, and cholesterol. The recipe is based on recommendations from the Institute of Medicine in the US and is regulated by the FDA. So the ingredients include oat flour, rice, and soy proteins, as well as omega-3 fatty acids and their customized micronutrient blend provides essential nutrients like vitamin D and folate as well as electrolytes such as potassium. It's convenient and great when you're on the go as either a ready to drink bottle or as a powder that you can mix with water or I guess you could mix it with whatever else you want. Soylent has a neutral taste profile by design which gives you the freedom to adjust the flavor by adding fruits or other items based on your own personal taste. They've shipped more than 11 million meals to date across the United States and Canada, including quite a few to Linus Media Group members who are buying it, by the way. So you can check out Soylent and get 10% off your order by using our discount code, which is linked in the video description, and try it for yourself today. Well, they got to ship it to you. So try it for yourself in a few days. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you disliked it, you know what to do. But hey, if you liked it, hit that like button, get subscribed, and maybe even consider supporting us. You can buy a cool shirt like this one. You can just change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code. We've even got instructions up there. It takes like 10 seconds. Or you can even join our community forum. Start replying to people's questions or posting your own questions you'd love to have answered or just joining in the discussion. We've got links to all that stuff in the video description. Now that you're done doing all of that, you're probably wondering, hey, what should I watch next? So click that little button in the top right corner to check out this video that we are previewing right now. I guarantee you it's going to be the best thing you've ever seen. Second best, because this video was great too. 